Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. So today I'm going to be giving you a blow-by-blow -blow account of my CPL skills test. So hopefully those of you that have it coming soon know that you've got absolutely nothing to worry about. So if you find this video useful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel as I'll be following with a lot more. So I'm going to split this video into five sections. The first section will be the briefing and then I'll follow on uh, with the departure and en route. We'll then look at the general handling and the emergencies and then coming back to the circuit and then finally the debrief. Uh, if you don't want to watch the whole video and you just want to skip along, feel free to do so. I've put all the timings in the description. So when the run up to your CPL test, it's quite easy to get sort of nervous and uh, worked up and so on and so forth but the truth is the examiner actually wants you to pass and truth be told you've gone through your CPL course so your head of flying or deputy head of flying would not have signed your course completion certificate if they didn't think you were ready and also recommended you for the test so chances are you're, you're probably ready so absolutely be confident and believe in yourself you've got absolutely nothing to worry about so the CPL as I like to think of I, I find it I've probably found it more of a big psychological test uh, in the sense of I don't think there's any particular demanding flying that they're asking you to do but it's just more the psychology behind it and you demonstrating that you've got the competency and the decision making skills uh, to be trusted with public transport flight. So the CPL skills test, it starts off with uh, obviously meeting your examiner for your briefing. They'll then give you a route uh, to go and uh, plan out under some story. You know, perhaps you, they're a client and they're asking to go and take photographs on a given location or something along those lines. Now, before you get started, uh, I'll just like to rewind a little bit before the examiner arrives. One of the things that I did that helped me was I found the examiner in office, and your flying school probably have this, where I laid out all the relevant paperwork like my licenses, aircraft documents, um, my course completion report, school records, and so on and so forth. So it was all available to the examiner in a nice, neat fashion, and they didn't have to go and routing around. I also then found myself a separate room where I could do my flight planning beforehand once the examiner told me the route. Um, so that certainly helps. And remember, you're trying to build a picture that you're organized and ready to undertake public transport flights. So the more professional you come across, the more organized you come across, the more chances you have of seeding that early picture into the examiner's head that, hey, actually, um, this person or this lady is really well suited to passing the CPL skills test. So once you've done your planning, your performance and so on, you'll then come together with the examiner and be ready uh, to start your briefing. Now, although the examiner is there to examine you, that doesn't mean that you can't help them and work with them uh, to try and achieve certain things. So during the briefing, if the examiner is not local to your airfield or is a visiting examiner, there might be some quirky rules uh, that the examiner may not be familiar with. There's no harm in just sharing with them that, oh, for example, Airfield X doesn't appreciate if we do an engine failure after takeoff uh, straight afterwards, they prefer us to be over the sea or whatever. And again, they'll just appreciate these sort of little tips. So again, I mean, don't be a smart aleck who knows everything, but if you have got useful insight that will save both of you um, an issue later on, then by all means voice up and, and try and work together uh, for this. And also relax and try and enjoy the day as daft as it, as daft as it seems. You'll always remember your CPL skills test day. That's near enough it uh, for the briefing. I won't label on about the documentation. I did a video already covering uh, what documentation to look at, performance, all the sort of things that you need to be considering, which you'd already have gone through on your CPL course. But just in case you missed it, there is a link in the top right hand side of the video. So as now you're ready to go out, the one thing you don't want to forget to do is to book out or whatever the process is with your uh, airfield to go flying. Remember, uh, you are expected to take ownership of the flight, so the examiner is merely there as a passenger um, in that capacity so they won't do anything to help you like put a flight plan in or anything like that. So great now we're out at the aircraft your pre-flight checks everything just exactly as the book um, or exactly as your approved checklist um, and then going out I'm not going to labor again on too much on this one because you'd have done it already quite a lot on your CPL course but it is public transport flight so the examiner will expect you to crack on expeditiously uh, and not to delay. That's one of the issues that I had on my test whereby the airport were doing a runway inspection at the time it was taking a while so if something like that happens and don't feel to or don't be afraid to get on the radio and uh, just ask for an update on how long they're going to take and all that sort of thing again they're looking for you to show captaincy and to take command of your public transport flight so continuing the flight on now in the en route section uh, so you do have to take off checks your um, top of climb checks 
and then once you get going you know your your halfway point or your quarter point checks and whatever and make any corrections that you need and once the examiner is happy and satisfied that you will find the destination will find the target um, then they'll ask you to divert them for whatever reason to a different uh, destination so continue on the flight on now in the en route section uh, so you do have to take off checks your um, top of climb checks and then once you get going you know your your halfway point or your quarter point checks and whatever and make any corrections that you need and once the examiner is happy and satisfied that you will find the destination will find the target um, then they'll ask you to divert them for whatever reason to a different uh, destination so again uh, just do everything that you've been taught in your cpl course for the diversion management and uh, getting the diversion going giving your examiner the updated etas keeping all your checks going and so on uh, and so forth so yeah the important thing there is really just to relax and just get into the flight you'll do your best flying when you're nice and relaxed so i know it's difficult to try and uh, get your mind drowned but yeah just try and be relaxed and just try and enjoy the flying as much as possible and you'll be in a good place to demonstrate to the examiner your competency is at a good level if something happens you excurred from your altitude briefly or you drift away from your heading but you correct it straight away don't worry um, there is a little bit of leeway not a huge amount you know if you're flying 10 degrees off for you know a solid five or ten minutes yeah that, that'll probably be a problem but you know if you if it's a small mistake and you're correcting straight away don't worry about it just keep going and stay focused the examiner will probably be scribbling quite a lot down on on his or her knee pad again don't take any notice of that it does not mean anything they're just making notes of the uh, as the flight is going on okay so you finish your, the en route section and then you move now into an area to do your general handling and work on some of the emergencies again just a little tip please don't be the smart aleck or, or whoever but if the area that you're in isn't quite suitable because you know there's a parachute drop zone or something like that close by then again just say um you know i think there's a parachute drop zone at three o'clock a mile or two away I, I believe it'll be better if we went this way that's, that's completely fine and that's part of the awareness and sort of your your captaincy that you're being examined on so again if you see if you think something's not quite right just just speak up voice your reason for it and yeah i'm sure the examiner will be more than happy uh on on that interjection so straight into the general handling all the maneuvers that you've been taught your steep turns your stalling um probably a little bit of limited panel and so on and so forth and then into the emergencies again I'm, i won't go into detail on each of these because you'll you'll do them in your cpl course uh, and they've already been mentioned previously but what i would say is when i came to the emergencies um, in some of the emergencies which are time critical so for example an engine fire you need to do those actions and drills from memory that's fine but sometimes you'll get an un unusual emergency uh, where you're just expected to work through the checklist uh, something that's not time critical so perhaps you've got an electrical issue on the aircraft you'd look at your uh, checklist and you do you'd follow the direction if you have got an autopilot uh, in the aircraft uh, this was one of the points that i was pulled up on you know there's no harm in using it you if you're being assessed in an airplane part of the assessment is to show that you know how to use uh, the systems that are available to you so if you've got an emergency and it's non-critical then to take some of the load off there's no harm in engaging the autopilot now obviously you can't fly the whole skills test in autopilot but if it makes sense to do it at the time then again that was one of the feedbacks given to me that i didn't engage the autopilot when it would have taken some of the workload off if you're not sure it might be one just to check with the examiner during your briefing uh, at that time right so emergencies are over you're heading back to the airfield now uh, to do your circuits or if you're in an a or if you're in an, an asymmetric aircraft then to do your asymmetric work also uh, your, your uh, go rounds and your single engine stuff as well again you, you're getting towards the end of the test now so you'll probably be starting to get tired but keep working as hard as possible keep your awareness going uh, keep a good lookout if you're seeing traffic point it out to the examiner so they know you've seen it and just dig deep and just keep going now uh, this is the important bit and you've probably had a good flight so far but you can easily throw it all away uh, by doing something silly at this stage uh, one of the things that uh, happened to me on my skills test when I got back to the airfield it was quite busy so um, there were aircraft uh, in the in the pattern with me it's it's quite a large training airfield my um, my airfield and we're on an exam call sign also people will try to facilitate the actions that you're taking but it doesn't mean you're air force one and you can do what you want so you've got to start in with the traffic and one of mine uh, one of the things that happened to me is uh, i got to about 300 feet there was an aircraft that was slow to cross the wrong way so i hadn't had my landing clearance again make an early decision to go around rather than to get yourself into that gray area of 
potentially uh, doing something really silly and if you go around because the runway is occupied there's nothing wrong with that come back and you redo the exercise again there's uh, there's no problem at all so again just be conservative with your spacing your speeds and so on and so forth once you get into the circuit area and hopefully all your circuits go fine your asymmetric work goes fine then it's coming in now taxing and again stay concentrated because again you know one move can can give you a partial in this area because you miss a checklist or you uh, go beyond uh, a taxi point that air traffic control have told you to so work really hard to to just hang in there till the end once you park the aircraft up depending on the examiner some may tell you straight away some may give themselves a moment to think whatever you do do not ask them have i passed or have i failed just give them their space and they will tell you when they're ready uh, to to do so a lot of examiners as i say like to just you know once the aircraft is stopped leave you to secure the aircraft and everything and just give themselves a little bit of time to think about what's just happened uh, before they make their final decision. So absolutely, just don't go straight and say, right, have I passed? And then from there, hopefully you get a positive answer and then it's into the debriefing stage now. Now the debriefing stage, it's its a great learning opportunity for yourself. So just try and uh, you know listen to the points that the examiner makes. They often make some really, really good ones. Um, they made some good ones for me, which have stuck ever since. And I uh, just enjoy the day. And after they've, uh, finished and all the paperwork is done which is super important make sure the paperwork is done you are officially a commercial pilot and uh, it's just then waiting for the CAA to issue your paperwork best of luck guys hope you've found that video helpful and useful if you have don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel all the best